Initially, I got interested in human population genetics, I think in kindergarten. I went to a, a large inner city public school for elementary school. And my favorite day of school was International Day when all the children would come in to school wearing all of their traditional clothes. And it just struck me that there was so much diversity and so much pride in our diversity. And it made me proud to be different as well. And that idea of being able to appreciate people for their differences, their cultural differences and their physical differences that I could see really stuck with me. And it got me interested in trying to understand biologically what are the similarities and differences among people and does this help us better serve the medical needs of everyone. My name is Dr. Sri Lakshmi Raj and I'm an assistant professor of population genetics at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine. I'm jointly affiliated with the Department of Genetics as well as the Cancer Center. Much of what we see in the public health domain has been based on racial categorization. So a patient will walk into a clinic and will check off a box and say, I'm black, I'm Hispanic, I'm Asian, I'm white. But that doesn't really hold any genetic weight. You could say that you're black, but that could mean that you're African, it could mean that you're Brazilian, it could mean that you're African American, so you have admixed ancestry, so you might have some European ancestry. And so by using genomics, we can better define what a population is and do better than a racial categorization. The end goal of doing all of these studies is to really make medicine applicable to all. We have a very good understanding of how colorectal cancer risk mutation profiles might look in a white European individual, for example. But we don't understand how these risk mutation profiles look in individuals of different ethnicities. And this is especially relevant to colorectal cancer because individuals of African-American descent have much higher risk to colorectal cancer. And not only do they have higher risk, but it's also at a younger age and they also have a more severe outcome. Many times when we deal with genetic diversity, a treatment that will work for one individual will not work for somebody else. Knowledge here really is power. The more we understand about a certain community, the better we are equipped to prevent disease, to treat it, and also to understand population-specific disease outcomes, how they differ, why they differ, and where they differ. Most genetic studies that have been conducted have been carried out on individuals of Northern white European descent. But here we have over 90% of the Bronx is non-European white. And part of the reason that I joined Einstein and that I was recruited to Einstein is it's become very clear that we really need more representation so that other populations are also represented in global genomic studies within the USA and worldwide. I'm not gonna say that genetics is the cure-all for this because it's not. Many of the reasons that we have uh, population or racial disparities so far in uh, cancer diagnostics is, is systemic. So many people don't go for screening or they're discouraged to screen for colorectal cancer or other forms of cancer. And so there has to be a real societal shift to try and encourage cancer screening in other populations so that we can enable better health outcomes for everybody. So we have multiple factors that are affecting these population differences that we see, one of which is genetics. As a population geneticist, it is my responsibility to try and close that gap and make sure that everybody's represented when we do genetic studies on risk to colorectal cancer. Uh, and uh, that is one major avenue where we can really increase representation of individuals and increase our understanding of how colorectal cancer looks in individuals from different ethnic backgrounds.